I have posted scores of climate related videos on my YouTube channel, and I sometimes receive comments from climate change skeptics and deniers that cold weather causes far more fatalities than hot weather, and that deaths from natural disasters in general have decreased over the past century. So I decided to check the actual data to see if either or both of these claims is valid. In looking for data on deaths related to hot temperatures and cold temperatures here in the United States, I found that the National Weather Service has been keeping track of deaths from lightning, tornadoes, floods, and hurricanes since 1940. But surprisingly, they didn't start tabulating deaths resulting from excessive heat until 1986 and from excessive cold temperatures until 1988. To complicate things, they have been tabulating deaths from winter storms separately from cold fatalities since 1986. Winter storm deaths include deaths mainly from three factors, namely cold temperatures, traffic accidents, and carbon monoxide poisoning. With regard to the claim that deaths from natural disasters have decreased over the last century, I found that claim to be true, at least to some extent. Deaths from tornadoes and hurricanes generally have been lower in recent years than they were 80 years ago. Much of that decline can be attributed to better forecasting, which provides warnings that give people time to shelter from tornadoes and to evacuate the areas most likely to be impacted by hurricanes. The 2005 hurricane season was an exception because of Hurricane Katrina. The Weather Bureau warnings about the storm were reasonably accurate, but there were failures in evacuation and shelter plans that led to over a thousand deaths in that storm. Lightning is not considered a natural disaster, but over the 80 year period for which data is available, there has been a significant decrease in the number of lightning fatalities in the United States that can be attributed to better forecasting and better warning systems for severe thunderstorms. Let's examine the claim that cold weather causes more deaths than hot weather. The chart shows the weather-related fatalities recorded in 2021, as well as 10-year and 30-year averages for weather-related deaths. The National Weather Service cautions that the number of heat-related deaths shown for 2021 in the chart may be an undercount because it takes some time for death certificates to be tabulated. In addition, 2021 had an unusually large number of weather-related fatalities compared to the 10-year and 30-year averages, so it makes more sense to compare the 10- and 30-year averages to answer the question about heat-related versus cold-related deaths. To start with, let, let's assume that all winter storm deaths are from hypothermia or are cold-related, even though we know that not all winter, storms death, winter storm deaths are from hypothermia, and that we add them to the cold weather deaths that were not storm-related. Then, if we compare the 10-year averages we have 105 heat-related deaths per year compared to about 68 cold-related deaths, or 54% more heat-related deaths than cold-related deaths. If we compare the 30-year averages the same way, we get 148 heat-related deaths per year compared to about 65 cold-related deaths per year, or 128% heat-related deaths than cold-related deaths. Clearly, the claim that cold-related deaths are more frequent than heat-related deaths is not true for the United States. Overall, the number of weather-related deaths is small to other causes of death in the United States. However, there have been events that caused relatively large number of weather-related deaths. For example, in 2005, more than 1,000 people died during a five-day-long heat wave in Chicago, and parts of the upper Midwest. As global temperatures increase,
the potential for much larger number of heat-related deaths will increase as well. To see how heat-related deaths are likely to increase as near-surface temperatures rise in the United States, we can turn to a recently published paper from the First Street Foundation that predicts which counties in the United States are likely to experience at least one extreme heat danger day per year. An extreme heat danger day is defined by the Weather Service as a day during which the heat index reaches 125 degrees Fahrenheit. The heat index, sometimes called the feels-like temperature, is based on temperature and humidity readings taken in shady locations or indoors. For example, a day where the temperature reaches 91 degrees Fahrenheit and the relative humidity reaches 89% would have a heat index of 125 degrees. The model developed by the First Street Foundation is based on the RCP 4.5 climate change scenario, which is considered middle of the road by climatologists. Basically under the RCP 4.5 scenario, global average surface temperatures would rise between two and three degrees centigrade by the end of the century. That corresponds to a range of about 3.6 to 5.4 degrees Fahrenheit by the end of the century. The First Street Foundation model predict, predicts that by 2053, the number of people that will, be, will experience at least one extreme heat danger day per year will rise from the current value of about 8 million people to about 107 million people. As a result, the number of heat-related deaths could rise to about 2,500 per year. Most of these heat-related deaths will likely occur in the heat belts shown in the figure on the right. If increased mitigation efforts are made in the extreme heat belts, that number could be reduced substantially. Examples of mitigation include making cooling centers widely available, providing free transportation to the centers, and by providing assistance to low-income people uh, to buy and operate air conditioners during very hot days. Thanks for watching. I hope you have found the information in this video helpful. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments section and I will do my best to answer them. Please take some time to watch my other climate videos, and if you haven't already done so, I would appreciate it greatly if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel.